Anna. Uh, my name is Elisa, and I'm Carol's youngest and best child. <laughs> <laughs> she would agree, I'm sure. Uh, on behalf of my family and our mother, I too would like to thank all of you for coming to share this memorial with us. Mom was someone special to many people, and while I really am just one of her four children, I know that I speak for all of us when I say that we're honored and proud that our mother was loved so well. It is a comfort to us to hear how Mom impacted the lives of others, and we are especially grateful for all of the kindnesses shown to our dear dad at this time. Mom's death has been a shock for us all, and when people ask me how Mom died, the story, story pardon me, inevitably begins here at her church. Some have remarked how ironic it seems that Mom would begin her journey home to the Lord due to an accident while volunteering at church. I've thought a lot about that and have decided that rather than ironic, Mom breaking her leg here at church is actually pretty emblematic of her life as a whole. First and foremost, Mom believed in service before self. She loved volunteering here at the church. Whether it was doing secretarial work, mentoring in mops, leading a Bible study, or just helping to check in kids for vacation Bible school. Matthew 7.16 says, By their fruits you will recognize them. Our mother would never boast of her service, nor would she toot her own horn about her desire to bear much good fruit. But this verse was a cornerstone of her life in her many roles as a daughter, a wife, mother, grandmother, and educator. Mom would hear a request for help and think, I can do that. She had insecurities like the rest of us, but did not allow these insecurities to keep her from changing her I can to I will do that. It isn't an exaggeration to say that in her 72 years, Mom touched thousands of lives through her leadership, compassion, and commitment to be the hands and feet of the body of Christ at home, at work, in her community, and in her church. Mom served our family unwaveringly, and we always knew that she expected the best for us and the best from us. And we knew, too, that Mom would do all she could to help support us to achieve both. We should all aspire to leave such a legacy of service and to be known by the good fruit we bear. Secondly, Mom fell here because she was, let's face it, stubborn. She refused to use a cane or to ask for help because she hated drawing attention to her weakness. Many have been surprised to hear that mom suffered from rheumatoid arthritis nearly all of her adult life. You may be further surprised to know that she had two artificial hips, had had surgery for carpal tunnel syndrome, suffered from COPD, ongoing heart troubles, multiple allergies. I could go on. You would be surprised because mom didn't complain about these things. She tolerated a level of pain and physical limitation that would cripple most of us, but she ignored them both to continue doing what she believed in. That things were harder for her to do as she got older, she would admit, but she'd do so saying, it's just hard to get started, but once I'm up, I'm fine. This stubborn persistence manifested itself in all aspects of her life, from her quilting and gardening, to her parenting, and her walk with the Lord. Hebrews 10, 23 and 24 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another onward toward love and good deeds. Mom never stopped spurring us on, even in her final words to each of us. Not simply because it was important to her, but because of her hope in Christ Jesus. She knew how important it would be for each of us. In the last moments we had together, I realized that there is no greater gift that a mother can give to her daughter than to teach her and to love her well. I thank you, Lord, for giving me this mother who taught and loved me so well. And I pray that you will grant us all the wisdom we need to learn to live without her. Amen. Hi, I'm Candy Trotman, and as he said, I live on the same street as the Andersons. I'm speaking today as a neighbor and as a member of the book club that Carol and I created a few years ago. 
My husband, Phil Trotman, and I built our house at 1025 Aqua Vista Lane in 2003, after Phil had retired from his career as a dentist in the Air Force. Phil had a private dental practice in Stanwood in the early 1980s, and we had decided to return to this beautiful scenic area. Phil moved over here to Camino in the spring of 2003, but I didn't join him until summer. Jerry Heichel was building our new house, and Phil needed to help make housing decisions, start his new job, and find a temporary rental. Don and Carol graciously offered Phil the use of their house while they vacationed in France. So when I visited Phil in May, I experienced Don and Carol's hospitality before I ever met them in person. I knew they'd raised a family of four because of the senior high school portraits on the wall. I also observed that Carol was a much more organized and meticulous housekeeper than I would ever be. However, once I met her in person, she didn't come across as intimidating. Carol embodied graciousness, humility, and practicality. And she did this with laughter, wit, and a great sense of humor. Carol knew herself. Her faith shaped many of her life experiences. And she knew how to use the skills she possessed. One of her skills was the ability to actively listen and make practical assessments. When I moved here, I had completed my master's level coursework in American history, but I still needed to write my thesis. Carol and I quickly bonded over our academic backgrounds and interests. She discerned ways to help me realize my thesis goals. As she could tell, I absolutely needed to finish it. And she wanted me to help her start a book club. I agreed to the idea of the club, but only after I finished my thesis. So when she heard that I finally planned to graduate, she reminded me of this commitment. And she helped me edit the very final draft of the thesis. So we launched our book club in January of 2007. Our club has benefited so much from Carol's vision and involvement. All of us are Camino Island women. Several of us are neighbors. We've met monthly now for four years, and we will miss Carol so much at our meetings. She took an active role in our book selections and, perhaps even more importantly, she kept us on track when we veered off far and wide. Carol shared her faith with us through her views on the subjects in our books. She understood so much about relationships. And we loved her keen and terse observations about the author's intents, the plots, the characters. Needless to say, she touched us deeply. I can hear us saying at the next meeting, I wonder what Carol would think of this. <laughs> As a neighbor and a book club member, I thank God for Carol's place in our lives and in our hearts. We'll all treasure our memories of Carol.